everyone, Trisha here from the Fire Wedding Wombs, and today we are going to talk about um, Clomid, also known as Clomiphene Citrate, and um, it's basically a fertility medication that induces ovulation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try my very, very best to explain how Clomid works. Um, there's a lot of technical terms and um, hormones that come into play, so I'm going to try my very, very best to just break it down as much as I can. Um, and also if you guys have any questions after this video uh, about Clomid, feel free to send us a message and we will try to the best of our ability um, to answer them for you. Um, basically Clomid is a selective estrogen receptor modulator that increases the production of the gonadotropins in your body. Uh, typically it is taken on cycle days 5 through 9, sometimes 3 through 7, and it could even be taken as early as cycle day 2. It all depends on your, your doctor and how they prescribe it to you. Um, and typically, if you are to ovulate on Clomid, it can be, you can ovulate anywhere from about 5 to 10 days after the last pill or dose was taken. But like I said, it all varies depending on the woman. Um, now what it does is, try to see how I can break this down. Um, it binds to the estrogen receptors in your body. Um, we have estrogen pretty much throughout our body, our cervix, our endometrium, our ovaries, um, hypothalamus, um, fat cells, basically everywhere. So when it binds to the estrogen receptors, it prevents the other estrogen that's in your body from being recycled and reused. So your body is thinking, hey, you know, there's not enough estrogen um, flowing in the body, so it pumps out more of um, more estrogen that in turn um, increases the production of the gonadotropins, which is the GnRH, which is the gonadotropin releasing hormone. I hope I'm not confusing you guys. And um, that in turn, um, that signals your pituitary gland to increase production of luteinizing hormone and the follicle stimulating hormone which matures the follicles in your ovaries and eventually it will lead to um, your follicle uh, to ovulation um, if clomid is to work for you so basically it just pumps out a lot more of the hormones that is needed to make luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone so that's typically what Clomid does. Um, basically tricks your brain into thinking there's not enough estrogen. So um, typically for, for some women it can work just like that. You know, if they have irregular cycles um, but they get their period every once in a while. Uh, for someone with PCOS it can help. Um, the one important thing to remember is that it's not really a miracle drug. You know, when I first started taking Clomid, I've been taking Clomid since June of last year, and my last dose was actually exactly almost one year after that. Is um, I was taking it June of this year. That was my last dose of Clomid, and unfortunately, um, after taking it for a year, it has not worked at all for me. So um, you know, it's important to know how your body works, how the medication works. That way um, you can get better results from it if you are to take it or if you need to take something completely um, different. Always talk to your doctor about um, the treatment options that you have. Um, for someone with PCOS, um, when Clomid doesn't work usually it is because of the um, insulin resistance and some doctors like to add in metformin or glucophage um, with the treatment using Clomid because um, it will lower your insulin resistance and make you more receptive to the Clomid. Um, some, wo some women with Clomid resistant, even, resistance even when they're taking um, 100, 150 milligrams, 200 milligrams of Clomid, they find that their body is not responding at all to the Clomid and that's usually because the androgen levels are high which is my, right now I'm currently dealing with that and some doctors add in um, steroids. Um, one known steroid that a lot of doctors use is dexamethasone, which I was on as well, um, to lower the androgens that are being produced by your uh, adrenal glands, which sits right above your, your kidneys. And sometimes that can help, and that can help um, 
make Clomid work for some women because um, there's not so many male hormones flowing throughout our body or sometimes you may which I think in my situation is right now um, I think a lot of the testosterone is being produced by my ovaries but that's a whole you know another situation so um, you really need to know how your body works what's going on with your body a lot of blood work um, needs to get done um, by your doctor and monitoring because um, if you have high androgen levels it can make you clone resistant because the testosterone basically shuts off um, too much testosterone can shut off the uh, the production of the GnRH the gonadotropin releasing hormone and if you're insulin resistant um, it can make you clomid resist or clomid resistant as well so <laughs> there's a lot of things that go on um, when we talk about clomid um, so I'm, right now I'm going to talk about a little bit of the side effects before I go on and on <laughs> um, a lot of this it varies from woman to woman some women um, can take clomid and have close to no side effects whatsoever and some women can um, be affected by a great array of symptoms, sides, side effects and symptoms um, when taking Clomid. Um, for some women they can have nausea, headaches, um, hot flashes. I've heard a lot of women getting hot flashes. I experience a lot of hot flashes too when I'm on Clomid. Um, ovarian cyst. Um, another one is visual changes, vision changes, and that uh, I can say I experienced that every single time I've taken Clomid. It's almost like for me it was like trailing, like I could put my hand in front of my, my face and I can see like trailing. Um, that typically happens um, with higher dosages of Clomid. Um, that's why I've noticed the more Clomid I was taking, the more vision changes that I've had. And also it can um, produce hostile um, cervical mucus because like I said um, Clomid affects basically everything in your body that has estrogen and your cervix and your endometrium produces um, estrogen as well so when those estrogen receptors are blocked that um, is what causes the hostile um, cervical mucus. It can be very thick. Um, some doctors um, can prescribe um, estrogen, uh, I think it's suppositories, or medication to help with that. And some doctors will um, suggest doing an IUI. Um, that way you don't have to really worry too much about your cervical mucus. So um, that's some of the side effects of, of Clomid. Um, I'm trying to think of what else to talk about. Um, like I said, <laughs> I'm confusing myself now. Um, you really need to just talk to your doctor whenever you're taking Clomid. You need to be monitored on it. Um, uh, doctors will will notice that sometimes if they give you 50 milligrams of Clomid, it doesn't work. So it's almost like a stair step um, process. You're going to take 50 milligrams. If that doesn't work, they go to 100 and to 150 milligrams of Clomid, or even more. Uh, but typically some doctors will try to see what the issue is if you've been taking 150 milligrams and haven't ovulated at all on it um, and they'll be able to see that because typically you're supposed to get a day 21 progesterone level test um, and that's typically seven days after when you're supposed to have ovulated to see where your um, levels are at and see if you've ovulated. Um, typically when that doesn't work they after about 100, 150 milligrams or even more sometimes, um, they will probably add um, Folistim, which is injections, or you may move on to injections completely, or um, some women even try um, Femera. So there's a lot of things that go into um, taking Clomid, and um, you know, you just really need to talk to your doctor about your options and do a lot of research. Um, so if you guys have any questions, I know I'm probably <laughs> missing a few things, um, feel free to send it to us and we will be more than happy to answer them for you. And I will see you guys next week. Bye.